G2 struggle to win their map. It was none other than Tai Lu who brought the fire on Mirage. The Chinese chose to take it to Mirage first, and G2 find just two on the second half. It was spectacular work to watch both CT sides finding double digits, and now just one map away from the likes of Kenny S, Shox, and Co to not be in the legend stage. That's the reality that they're facing. And to break it down, of course, have none other than Pimp and Sponge. Guys, what is going on in the G2 camp? But I mean, are we just going to be giving Tyloo a lot of praise and shrugging at G2? Look, I think first and foremost, Tyloo have to be counting their lucky stars that have Ben Tet on their team, right? <laughs> ben Tet was tied uh, for the second place in clutches in this tournament so far. Now he's number one. Now he has a total of seven. But he had two clutches in that first half, a 1v4 and a one on two. And they were instrumental because when you look at that first half, Tyler only had five rounds and one of them was the pistol and one of them was against an eco. So realistically, if Ben Tet didn't get those clutches, they wouldn't have found themselves in this position at all. I think Shux's uh, emotions shown last in a clip before we went to a pause was pretty telling. The fact that he was sitting with his head down in his hands, feeling absolutely disgusted, I feel, by the performance of G2. They let this one slip out of their hands. They had this one in their hands. Had they not messed up those rounds, not lost the eco, not lost the clutch to Bent it, that never should have been won, it would have been their map. And coming into Dust 2 is a map where they feel very comfortable, so they're seeing that 2-0 progression slipping out of their hands. So, uh, you know, using words like disgusted, Shox definitely did look demoralized. What's going to be sticking out in his mind? You know how you get you, when you have a bad experience, you keep reliving it late at night. What is going to be going through Shox's mind about Mirage? I mean, he's just unsatisfied and he feels like the potential has not been rewarded, right? It's one of those situations where you as a player, and you probably know it as well, you think to yourself immediately after the game, we should have won that round, we should have won that situation, we would have been the happy ones right now, not the sad ones. Obviously, being a professional player, you learn to deal with that, you learn to say to yourself, all right, what's done is done, we can't do anything about it now, we have to focus on map number two, but those emotions coming out of shock straight after the game, those are real emotions. Tai Lu, though, great performance from them. Yes, Ben Tet, top of the scoreboard, spectacular game-winning clutches, but something, Chad, that you kind of told us to keep our eye out for coming into this game on Mirage was Tai Ty Lu's tendency to keep that ramp open. Did you see it happen again? Yeah, we actually have a clip here of an example of that, so if we can pull that bad boy up, I'll start playing it here. We know Summer, he tends to play that default position over towards apps, but this time around, he's actually covered off a ramp, so maybe G2 identified that same tendency. You're going to see the push come through through here and some is going to find the first kill what's unique about this is even though he grabs the first kill he's not expecting another player to re-aggress and this mm -hmm. is where shocks is actually going to make a really big play he's gone for more information gone to take that fight gone to take that jewel but if you look at the top left you can see that some has rotated completely out of position jacob yeah, and I love the impact placed by Shucks. If we fast forward a little bit here, you can see he's pushing all the way up to B apps. Now, what annoys me a little bit is that Shucks makes so much impact. He gets a frag here, but if you look at the minimap right here, the rotations is not coming in accordingly for D2. Yeah. They're misreading the entire situation. Despite Shucks making this ballsy push down towards slope, getting a kill, making it a four versus four, Basically knowing that this is gonna be a, like this is not gonna be a B hit, and if it is, I'm here to stop it. They're still not making the according rotations. Kenny is, is leaving A side open completely. Buddy and Lucky still both towards B. Yep. At that point, it's just a mess for D2. To be fair, it is a really good call here as we're gonna play this clip out from Tyloo. They initially were going to go into a B split, but as soon as they realize Shox's position, they've gone straight up connector. They're able to get into the site. I'm a bit disappointed that nobody's covering attacker while the bomb's going down. Lucky gets two free kills, and that's why now we have to have this one on four situation we're about to see play out from Ben. Set. Sure, he plays it fantastically, but maybe the round never would have needed to actually end up in this position if they had better communication and better post-plant positioning to allow that bomb to go down. So as you see this play out, this is one of those huge rounds that we're talking about from Ben Tet. If they didn't win this, Tyloo maybe, you know, would have only gotten three, maybe less, uh, sorry, not less, but, you know, they wouldn't have been seeing more rounds than that in this half. Wow, look at his stats prior to this as well. He was completely uh, irrelevant prior to that incredible play. Yeah, definitely by Ben Tet. It's, it's one of those rounds that goes back and forth while you mm -hmm. see T2 making not a mistake, but they're losing the opening duel. Then Shucks is regaining the control. T2 losing the control. Lucky regaining the control for G2 with two AVP frags. And all of a sudden, Ben Tet has to pull out a one versus four to win it. It's just one of those rounds that Shucks is going to think about when he's sitting there with heads in his hand. That one should have been ours. This is going to sound fun to say. Tai Lu, G2, Dust 2, mm -hmm. up next. Mm -hmm. Now, let's think about it. You've been theory crafting, Chad, that you, ha you have a feeling that Tai Lu could be strong at this map. We've only seen it twice so far in this entire stage. 
And when we're on our fifth day now. Sure, I, I think Tyler's individuals on the CT side are able to lock down all parts of this map. They can also have a very potent double op set up when you're executed as the main AWPer for sure, but somebody in Summer have been picking it up and they've been doing fun things with it as well. You think about that, then you're gonna have Benta and Attacker locking down other choke points of this map. Their CT side could be fantastic. The T side is very worrisome for me. I made a tweet out there saying that I think the European style that they're going for their defaults is actually being taken advantage of because when you allow a team like G2 is used to playing against the default spread pick information and execute style, that's, they're able to just go aggressive, find the kills and drop back. That's their bread and butter. So I think for these guys here, maybe go for more of that swarmy style that we used to see out of Tyloo, you know, over a year ago. Swarmy style, Jacob, who on earth is taking this one and why? While I not disagree with Tyloo may be good in those two, I simply just think that G2 is going to be better overall. Yeah. What we saw yesterday against uh, Fnatic, I believe it was, it was just a solid performance from G2. For the first time, I sat back with a feeling watching the game that this G2 is a team that has a red line, they have a foundation, and they know what they want to do in the map. They had a set game plan, so to speak. So in that regard, can they pull off the same performance as they did yesterday against Fnatic? I think no matter how well Tyloo is going to play, it's going to be tough for them. Yeah, we can only assume how Tyloo we were going to play, but yeah. we know how G2 plan on their T side. They were fantastic at taking long yesterday. Mm -hmm. They've got all the cool little tricks. And Kenny us on the AWP. We always know that's a playground for an AWPer. And Lucky, Lucky, like that's the main guy, right? Okay. He was very influential yesterday. He had a lot of impact frags. He was doing the secondary opening. It wasn't shocks. He was playing the rifle, whereas normally he's the secondary op. So he had a lot of impact, and he's the new guy being brought into this, to this team. We have been a little bit critical of him, not really showing up to the degree that we expected him to. But yesterday he showed why he's brought into this team, and he did super well. Yeah, this is going to be a task no matter what. Pressure mounting on the shoulders of both G2 and Tai Lu. The Chinese squad are just one map away from doing what they did in London. It's a new year. Is it a new team? We'll find out. G2 looking to take us to a third over with Henry G and Sadakist. We were talking about the possibility of G2 winning this series in two maps had they won on Mirage. We now arrive on Dust2 with them needing it, not just to close the series, but to survive in this major. We haven't got a ton of information on Tyloo's Dust 2. Like the graphics said, they've only played it five times. And whether they've been practicing it behind the scenes is yet to be seen, really. As we'll get into it, it's going to be due to standing on the T side here. One flash available as they go for a fast, short approach. They're looking at that bomb down as quick as possible. All they can really do is flash up and hope that no one gets taken down. But it's Ben 10 and Excura actually going to be defending here. And Ben 10 now alone as he has to try and find multiple kills. Flash goes up in the air, but down he goes. And it's going to be looking very, very good for G2 here. Ball plant by body. Flash up by Summer. Take that back. It was an aid directly. This will be the first round pistol win that G2 gets in this series. They lost both on Mirage. Kill makes that a little bit more likely as Summer. NCT is going to get locked in. Jax gets somebody down, wrapped through. He'll push the door. Somebody knows it, so he gets aggressive. Nowhere really else to go. And G2 go up 1 0 to start it off. There we go. First pistol on the board for them. Mirage felt like their map, but it all went horribly wrong in the second half. So, it will be a forced buy, but the looks of things here from Tyloo in the second round. Scouts are very powerful in Dust 2. You can get a few tags and hopefully set up your teammates for some shots with their CZs and P250s. We'll see if they can get it done here. It's a bit of a gamble to go for it, but it's still uh, absolutely viable. We'll see what they can do here. So there's players running down towards the top of middle there. You can see the first tag comes through. It's exactly what I'm talking about. And just softening those players up. All the pistols and body. He might be dropped first here, and indeed he is. What a shot that is. Somebody actually has to bomb. More horrific mistakes from G2 entering a tight choke point like that. No trade potential, no nades, and with the bomb on your back. It's, it's difficult to watch at some points here, Matt. Can't afford these mistakes or they'll be on a plane out of Poland. Back to France. Somebody. Cap in the smoke. Kenny's on the right. He's recovered the bomb, but that smoke means he can just watch the headshot position. He does exactly that. They will spray him down and make it impossible for him to retreat. But Bintet still has this covered off. They need to be expecting that. Hesitation in movement suggests that they are. Flash? Nope. Ah, oh, there is now, and it's exactly where Bintet looked away. If he had stayed looking, he might have been able to find the headshot on Kenny instead. But now they'll push onto the site with Excurit being the only one left to hold off on A. The other two down toward middle. Luckily, no weapons recovered. MP5 absolutely blown away there, and it's going to be so much damage done. Two versus two, but one shot potential with the scouts here. And that's where you'll see them do all the work oh, and it all man. falls apart. They've got to be more careful. Why they keep entering these choke points with just one player, I could not tell you. It doesn't make any sense. It blows my mind. All you have to do is hold up, slow default, go together. That is it.
at least trade out that kill at short. This is the one. No one's there. He gets back safely and even has the audacity to go for another one. Well, he knew the bomb was there, so they had to put more people in that position. So he just sat around and saw what he could find. And did flash for one. Great damage on the Deagle. You, you nailed it because that made it just so easy for the scout to hit the shots. He stayed there, had the boldness to do so after hitting a lovely first shot. Xbox smokes. Oh, hello. Log back in, DJ. It's Sliggy on this one. Sliggy. Maybe if you didn't talk to suspicious people, you wouldn't have a problem, Sliggy. Smoke inside of the hallway. It was the Xbox smoke, which does allow you to push up catwalk without being seen from mid. So that's exactly what they wanted the pistols to do. They swing lower, the two players that went mid. Means they're all going to try and push in. I take that back. One did go back to mid, so they want to split the site. And so far, it's gone well. Two kills to the good, and B site is extremely hard to retake. So bomb goes down. Okay, for I don't think. I was going to say, you may consider just backing off this. Why give full momentum back to them? Sure, they'll win the round. They'll get guns, but keep what you've got. Good stuff from G2, though. Just what they needed. Smoke in front of the tunnel, burst through, and flashbangs were very, very effective there. CT's not going to be going for this one. They'll have to give it up. So G2, after giving up a bit of a horror show of a round previously, will be back in the lead, 2-1. to one. And they'll keep four players up, it looks things as well. Lucky just patrolling towards the B tunnels. And it will be somebody to be found. So that's another weapon for G2. They'll take that all day long. Excarip and Ben Ted to say a UMP and a scout. As we continue, will they force around it? I doubt it, to be honest. We'll see. I want to take a time out here and discuss their options. You can see them purchasing up now. They are going for it. I can confirm the Deagle armor is out for attacker. Somebody, similar story at the 5-7. You can see them using that lovely smoke and just pouncing on opportunities there and finding the saving players as well. The end of the next round. A lot of pressure on the Tyloo here. Difficult one for them to pick up. Knowing it's unlikely the orb we brought out, they'll get another scout into the equation and somebody's pushing top and middle. Aggressively. Always oh, timed it with that flash being thrown to catch out body. Very well struck, but he will go down immediately after to the AK-47. Not so fortunate as to find the weapon and get away. Bold. Gave it a go. Shocks will wait out from the bottom side of the tunnels. Flash over shocks in, perhaps. Double flash, goes aggressive. MP9 clears corners, doesn't want to go all the way around it. Doesn't really have a range game with the MP9. We know how good attacker already is on that Deagle, or at least has been in this game. It's not like he's one of the formidable names when I think of that weapon, but it certainly made a difference two rounds ago, Summer. Goes back down. Nade could be significant. They weren't quite far enough through the door. If they were, and he'd hit them all, the scout would be extremely relevant at this point in time because he's hit another. It won't be a kill. And now they can overrun him. He's down to 29. That's when Bintet makes his presence known. Only getting the one on Jax, but the stat attacker still has the tunnel's position. Unfortunately for him, it's now a one on three, and I don't think he really fancies it at all. They're going to catch him retreating as well. He wants to try and get toward the weapons, but Kenny's already on top of that. And it's now 3-1 for G2. 3-1. More convincing this time, and that's going to be the full eco for Ty Lu. G2, certainly the favors going into Dust 2 here. And not really much can be purchased. Excrip looking for the orb next round. He'll be in a good position to do so with $4,300. He'll get a smoke and a flash. He'll probably smoke mid-doors. Could stack B or send five players towards long. The smoke is designed just to take vision away so they don't get any numbers in terms of crossing towards B at this point. So there's four towards long. Actually, five. They're going to go for something a little bit odd here. So what is the play? G2 won't be aware it's a full stack because of that smoke. And they've got a lot of positional control towards short on the CT side. But we'll find them a frag. Time will tell. All four look away from the flashes, surprisingly. He's very effective. Not so much on the kills. Attacker from range gets one, but that's all they've got so far. He's got one HP. In fact, got a dink on shocks, even with low life. But now with no life, 4-1-G2. Guns to come back up. Do they bring out? Yes, they do. AWP and an AUG for attacker. Only one AUG, interestingly enough. They didn't really have enough money to justify going for all of them. The slight price difference, you'd think that they justify it and still have enough utility. Bintet certainly could have. At this point, 
The orb's certainly out. Lucky's got the decent spawn forwards long. You'll see everyone take that if they get the opportunity to do so. He doesn't commit. And now three players in towards upper B, making their way towards lower. I suggest the B split is on the cards here. We'll see. Bomb going to be in that position as they set up smokes towards the middle corner here. Just allow them to get out the mid doors first and actually start pushing up. They're not smoking spawn. Hello? Wow. Okay. That's going to leave the bomb down. No smoke means full vision. I'm very surprised by that call. That's just so much information. Now there's a smoke in place. Kenny's locked off. I take it back. There's not. I thought there was that one all the way across. There's still a massive gap and attackers flanked them out. This round's done. Ty Lu surely has to get away with this. They forced out Body from the site. He wins the duel on Bintet. That will at least recover the bomb. And with Kenny already working through the tunnels, they can force the issue onto Excurit. He's gone for a pistol this close because he's on the AWP. Bomb dropped again. He holds the outside of the wall. He thought about going for it against Lucky. Well, he can still win this. Absolutely so. Lucky at the B doors right now. Silent so far. He knows the player's there. Gets the kill, but they have control of the situation. That is such a weird approach from G2. I like the fact they're pouncing the horde towards middle, but as you're running, surely one of you to smoke spawn to stop them having an absolute shooting gallery. They almost brought it back in the one versus one there, but still, that round was there. So if they just smoked that area, it would have been enough. It would have at least taken away one of those kills. Maybe they still lose one player, they cross over, but it wouldn't have been such a massacre. As we go 4-2 now, remember this could be where Tyloo find a 2-0 and knock G2 out of the tournament completely. Their money's still pretty healthy on the T side, but Tyloo called the timeout here. Their money not as strong. They recovered the AWP from the previous round, but only one player surviving means they're going to be hamstrung as they have to work out what the play is here. They've got an Org, UMP, and Benta yet to buy. You can see there's the replay of some of the crucial rounds here. This kill with the, U the USB was absolutely vital just to get that bomb down in an awkward position here. Two UMPs. So they might want to try something like an upper B push. Try and get that first kill in their favor. Maybe stack towards short with the SMGs. They're only sending one player towards the B bomb site. So it suggests they're going to be boosting up maybe towards short, and indeed they oh, will. Yeah. So they want to be close range here. This could work out, but Excurit in the worst possible spot. Bentet looking for a double kill, not going to happen. Uh, yeah, that was really late to get the AWP up there. Bintet was in good position. You'd think he would have held it if the AWP just wanted to hold back and cover off, but he wanted to go for the peak. And caught in the middle of two, he had nowhere to really hide. Still, though, it's a three on two. Still, this is a winnable chance for Ty Lu to pull it back, but all three players from G2 going to go mid. And we're getting to the point of importance for wins on G2's side, because remember, they're down a map. Somebody's going to catch off Kenny. And down a map as they are, they're low on money now. If you give Ty Lu a bunch of rounds on this CT side, you're making your job very difficult to try and keep this series alive and force out cash. Well, Molotov towards the doors. No utility remaining on the T side, but there's smokes available for the tunnels. Not really in the spot to throw them. I think that might be an attempt at least. As it does go down, there's smokes off the tunnels. Shoxy watching the window. His teammate won't be far behind him. He's actually behind that smoke right now. They need to start hitting these headshots. Time ticking away. It looks like G2 have done enough. Summer has absolutely no chance of winning this now. Has to try and fall back and maybe recover. A rifle, not going to happen. And Tyloo give it up. And to be fair, it was a decent attempt from them. Nice idea to stack towards short the SMGs. They're in the right position, but unfortunately, timing a little bit off. The AWP was trying to get more aggressive than it had to be. When we boosted up on the corner, they weren't expecting players right around the corner there, especially Body who managed to take down two, and uh, at that point back to the B split, and it looks very, very efficient. It is going to be 5-2, a very, very difficult situation now as they've got absolutely nothing. They can't spend a dollar here as they'll just take USPs and nothing else in round number eight. Kenny dropping down into the dark spot. Focus on mid again. So again, that last round extremely important because it would have left G2 with little to work with this time by. Instead now breaks Ty Lu. They have a chance to go up to their sixth round. And we start to get comfortable because it's not really been the CT sides that have been the problem for G2. Which is why, even though they're starting out on T side and they've got a number of rounds, they've got to make sure they make it a complete half. Jack's looking for the headshot. That was a boost for the pistols. It's a small one. Can't quite catch it off. It's a deathmatch angle, that one. He has confirmed they're on USPs at least. So uh, 
At that point, going towards long seems like the most advantageous approach here. Making their way forward. You've got no flash to go through the smoke. Should be absolutely zero chance of Tyler pick this one up. First couple of kills come through and body detects the boost beneath. Surely that won't be a kill out. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he realized it was a boost because the player was kind of at the apex of his jump anyway. So otherwise he would have sprayed in to find both, but they'll get them. So 6-2 indeed. And that was a one-round reset after three rounds. Well, now a two-round, but after three rounds going to G2, money's still not that great. Another EK. Uh, they are. Wow. Okay. Thought maybe they justify forcing out a little more aggressively, given that we're still pretty early on, but they don't want this to get too far out of control. So it's pistols only. Bit of armor. Not much else. No utility to speak of at all. Shock's got that long spawn. No one there to challenge him, though. They're actually going to be focusing most of their efforts towards the B push on the CT side, and unfortunately for them, no one's there whatsoever. This is a nightmare, as that's pretty much the round guaranteed. As they've got lower B controlled, Kenny S will have that. He's going to hit one of these shots at least, and maybe he won't. There it is, and he gets dropped now. Surely the PD-50. Decent attempt. They've got to recover the AWP at the end of the round, but they've got time to do it. Somebody will be taken down. The orb will be found any second. Shoxy picks that up. And we go 7-2. to two. G2 on top right now. Top fraggers. Kenny S of 11. Body and Lucky both with nine kills. And Stalu really trail here on the second map. They finally have cash. Do they even justify an AWP? x has 5,400. That would have been an orb, but not much else. He gets a couple of flashbangs, no armor. Not a massive deal on Dust 2. We'll see if it affects him. Kenny S going for the shots through the gap at the top of the door there. And Jax is not going to be committing. Actually, he is right through the flames there. Takes 50 damage. And if he gets a nade on top of him, he might be in trouble here. Nade is coming through. It's actually an incendiary as well. He'll have to extinguish it. Gives up his spot, and he's certainly going to die. As the bomb's dropped in the most... Horrible position imaginable, really. It goes right down towards CD spawn. How do they even get that back? It's going to be extremely difficult for them to do so. No shot from Excurate, though, from the AWP. Body's got a dink through the wall on somebody. That gave Lucky all the confidence in the world to go for the fight, but not aware that there's a third one down toward the pit. Bintet finds it with the AUG, and it falls to just Kenny. Bomb watched. Kenny missing. Tyloo should find their third round. You can see why the importance of... Okay. Minute to work with here. They've got to be careful. Kenny could still do this. Absolutely could. Smart to smoke him off. Try and contain him at this point in time. Push him back towards A. Player on shorts. Needs to be very careful here. Kenny's aware of it, but surely the CT wins out. He wow. does, and this is a classic Kenny S moment now. If he gets a plan for long and gets down towards that position, this is... Absolutely his round, but he will oh, just no. focus towards short. Hits oh. the shot, and there it is. An absolute Kenny S special there. Three versus one. The bomb down towards CT spawn. He nails the first shot, and the smoke actually allows him to get back towards Zay, and he's aware of the presence towards that short position. Nails that. Good plan, and didn't panic at all. As soon as he was spotted, he repositions and nails it. This is where it all began. Attacker gave him an opportunity, and he capitalized upon it. Really, really strong round for Kenny S. Some I was, absolutely world-class form, which we haven't seen from him in a while. No, that's brilliant. And I was about to say, you can see why the rounds early on with the money advantage were so important, because if Tyler win that, they start to close the gap. Even with seven rounds, it's workable for them when they swap over to CT based on how things are going. Finally, some clutches going their way. You keep Bintet in mind in the last map. It's lovely from Kenny. I was a bit concerned when he missed the first shot after dropping down, but he made him good on it immediately after. And the smoke, I thought, was self-preservation. It turned out, as you say, to enable him to fall back. So two timeouts used now for Tyloo already. This being the second. And we'll see what they respond with. They have to sit to pistols once again this time. It's only a fourth round bonus. CT side, that's not enough. The way he's playing right now, you just figure someone's going to land into his crosshair. Nade's going to go deep. Shock's already in. Forced out. He's committed. Jax takes the brunt of the exchange in behind in the tunnel, but Shock's already found the kill. Tyloo, that was their ticket back into this game. And one versus three, the bomb down in CT spawn up against an Orpa. You'd think there's no way they give it up, but they did. And they find themselves here. Nine, two down, but looks at things. 
just two players remain. They managed to get an AK back and some with low HP. He's opting just to save that, but looks at things as they make their way towards A to plant the bomb. Shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. It's attacker looking for a 1D kill. That's be a hell of a shot. Can't get close. And like we said, Summer just saving the AK-47 all the way back there in T-spawn and probably gets found, to be honest. You can see he's being hunted and there's no way he knows Shox is going to be there. Executed behind the car and it will be a very clean round for G2. They give up one frag there. Just body goes down, but he already found two kills in that round. They've got enough money for the rest of the half at this point, especially Kenny S. He's got a full buy with 12k residual cash. Excaru gets the AWP out and still they're not looking like they're fully equipped. I think Summer will have enough for utility here, but they'd ideally like a double AWP set up. Haven't really had the opportunity to show us that as we get into round number 12. Lucky's got the long spawn. Watch out for him. Going to be using it with the AK, but looks at things. They'll flash him over and see what can be done. He has got body behind him as they do fully commit. Lucky's inside of the flames. He's got the flash high in the sky. He wants to repeat this because somebody's already got the kill. He does it just before the flash blooms, and therefore gets the kill. Kenny's going to follow that. Execure it down. Long open up. Bintet still, though, on catwalk. He needs to fall off of it. He needs to be sure to support his teammate over toward Carr. Where Summer waits. May overlook this. All top down. Absolutely spammable in that position, yeah. in the new car position that compared to the old model that was there that was windowless. You could see through it. It wasn't easy. The flames in the front of it, but it wasn't as penetrable. So Summer might get away with this. I have a suspicious feeling. Fortunately, they're going to back off of it. So forget that. They're going to go back toward mid and inside of mid already. Shox is at the doors. If he clears that, they'll split this and go to B. It's kind of strange Kenny didn't molt off the car, just to be clear, because they weren't 100% sure they'd check that position, but still might not be a huge talking factor here as he continues to find frags, and we're going to do a four on two with the CTs completely separated. It's definitely not a factor because they went away from it. I think you're right, but they killed two at long, so the suspicion was that, mm. or the, the assumption was that, well, we've got the two long players. Why would there be a third? It, it absolutely would. I guarantee you Summer had at least a kill on the plate for him. Ooh, if they went that way, Attacker's got two on the doorstep right now. Kenny and Jack's down. Bomb's still going to be planted. Lucky's going to grab it. Fortunately, they had three players going in the same direction, and the bomb was picked up on the way through. Shox is still holding in mid, as he was the whole round. That's pretty much why they made the mid-round call to swing to B, and it's worked out perfectly for them. Well, there we have it. The long take there. Nothing too technical from G2. As I always say, if they get gifted the opportunity to send a key rifle or even an AWPA towards long, they'll usually take it. And that's why maybe a lot of teams don't like playing this map too much because it means less tactical teams can find those sort of advantages and take control of positions like long. It's incredibly difficult to defend as it looks even more likely that G2 pick up the second map. That's why we said Mirage had to be a must win for Tai Lu as now... They're 10-2 down, and once again on the pistols. Haven't really done anything to challenge G2 at this point. Losing that one versus three seemed to have ruined them here. 10-5 would be a lifeline, but they'd have to get around, past this round first with just CZs and P250s. We have seen G2 make mistakes, but right now, looking pretty clinical on the second map. Going to boost on the blue box, maybe here. We'll see. Not quite, just going to be going in towards the actual long cave itself. And Lucky is ready to kill both of these. Yeah, so it should be pretty short work for him on the AK. Mm, careful. Don't give yourself up too easily. Meanwhile, it is Pistols winning it out. It's the B site, Summer and Attacker. One high, one low, top of the box, and directly on the floor in front, but they want the gun back. Kenny was quick to make sure they could not. It's still the advantage. Body's found been set. Lucky top mid. He backed way off of the long doors after the brief little exchange they did have. And that's given him the position to take care of the pistols at range. He didn't want to be up close knowing they were pushing through. Kenny, he'll take down attacker. Decision making seems much better from G2 this game. Yeah, Dust 2 seems to be their map. Every time I've watched them play it now, it looks like they're comfortable. But uh, either way, Tylo looking for 11-4. Seems to be the double up setup will be coming out for the first time here. It's Summer and Excurip finally bringing that out. It's been an absolute nightmare of a half for them. Nothing going in their favor. Somebody... You'd expect him to hit shots like that with a 5-7, no problem. Starting to fall apart here, Tyloo. Cash looks very likely as the third map. And maybe just a straight-up B-rush here. Jack's lead the charge. Flashbang goes in, and it, oh my god, does it land. Attacker's got to try and recover this, but Mac 10 out, and they've got so much money, says it all. They are as confident with that B-rush. 
Molotov's in, that's pretty much round done. You don't even consider this if you're on the CT side. You just have to fall back and save the orbs and you've got to accept that this one's gone. Let's see what they can find with it at the very least to see if they can hold them into what will be the last round of the half. Double up. Bintet found. $400 residual. Summer's on 15. He's certainly vulnerable at this point in time as well on the site itself. Molotov's going to clear car. That's a little more standard, to be fair. But oh, boost elevator. Summer's head's down. I don't think they can. He sees him. Yeah, got him. But he's going to go now. Absolutely, body's going to find the kill. Excure gets a shot from the pit. But does Shocks even find him? Oh, he nearly does. Oh, he turns it back. He got both. I thought he looked away too soon. It costs them dearly. And no guns left over. It's going to be 12-2 and very little to work with. That's so sick from Shocks at the end. He thought he killed the player on the corner. He's like, you know what? You can live for a little bit longer. I got to take care of your little friend there. And uh, Which begs around. the question, how did he not kill him in that time? I don't know. Maybe he ran out of bullets or something like that. Either way, it's gone horribly wrong. The auto snipers are out. The damage is being done. It's going to be Bentec taking the majority of it. You normally expect to kill in these sort of rounds. That's why Dust 2 can be a lot of fun. If you get lots of money, like G2 have right now, you bring in those auto snipers, many, maybe multiple orbs as well. Go for initial damage there, but they didn't really do as much as you'd expect. But looking for 13 2 on the T side of Dust 2. Kenny S. Makes his way towards middle. There is a player there on the other side who starts to fall back now. Made through the doorway. Bintet. And Summer to hold it off. Summer in the additional cubby on the new version of Nuke. Smoke down. Let's take it off a bit. Have a little smoke by Shonks just to put another Xbox out. He can try and spot through the doors again and they can put pressure on to Catwalk as well, but I... I don't think that's the plan. High side pit for somebody. This position, we saw Zeus play this last week and he whiffed hard on it. It was with the AUG as well. That time it took a number of bullets to get body and Shox was easily able to trade. They considered looking that way. It can catch people off. I prefer him to be right on the ledge, right? So as soon as he gets that kill, we just hold forward and drop down. He was way too deep on that one. Uh, if you were going to get multiple frags, it would have to be an absolute mistake from G2. Uh, but either way, four versus three now. Summer and Bentet already low. It's Bentet who took the damage from that auto sniper at the very beginning. They're trying to boost behind the smoke here, which is successful, but he has been spotted. Lucky will trade it out and get a couple of frags, as we'll see Summer drop as well. It couldn't have gone any worse for Tyloo there. They lost the pistol. They win the second round force by, but that's pretty much it at that point. It was Kenny S, the one, the magnificent one versus three that really dominated the half. 13 2. And it looks like Tyloo might be done at this point. Well, at least for this map, Cash is third. It's looking like G2 should tie it up. We'll take a short break at halftime. We'll find out if they can close it quickly. Or maybe Tyloo's got other plans. We'll be right back.
The boot on the other foot, G2 in the lead this time at half. I suppose, truthfully, they were in the lead last half, too, at 10-5. They just yep. couldn't close it out when they got to the T side. But they are CT this time, and after a 13-2 half that looked very comfortable, I don't have many doubts to think that we're going to cash. I tend to agree, Matthew. We'll see if Kenny S can open things up here as he takes a little play towards middle. He will fall back to the safety of the mid-doors, and Ben Tet with a P250 enables him to have a bit more range and challenge position like this at long. No presence at all ready from the CTs. One player at the car. That's going to be shocks as Bentair wakes for a mistake. Anyone going to peek at all? Three players with him now. They've got two smokes, presumably for the crossover. They could use one deep in spawn or just use two completely to cover the cross. And uh, we'll see how it pans out. Jack's the bait in shocks here. Yeah, multifunction, information and bait. So far it's worked. But they're going to check it. They check the close corner. Still have to consider that the car is not cleared. Somebody's doing exactly that, and he'll see him sneaking out ever so slyly into frame. Bobby, let's get one back. Kenny fades off the smoke bombs down inside of it, but they will easily be able to scoop that up, and attackers got jacks. Pistols as they stand were 2-0 in favor of Tyloo and Mirage. It was G2 that picked up the first one this map. Still a chance they can pick up this one as well. Kit for lucky. And Body and Kenny both have 100 HP to work back in flash to go over. Yeah, the flash there, surely deployed, but it's not there. Actually, got to go up dry and see what can be done. So I to take most of the aggro here, and Kenny has to nail the shot. Bintet still behind the car. Headshots, ooh, dinks through the edge of the box. Not enough. They're all on top of the bomb, and now x -Grid. He's too far away. Nothing he can do. That's G2 and a great retake, all three together. And the bomb defused to make it 14-2. Insult to injury for x -Grid. Just when it seemed like they were about to get something going in their favor, they get that first kill towards Carr. They get the bomb down, the sights under control. They have the man advantage, but they let it all slip away. Couldn't hit anything, and GT didn't even flash. Just run up short, hit their shots, and body got one through this smoke. I didn't notice that. It's quite cool. As attacker did what he could, but fantastic shots, and then back towards short. And like you said, too far away. Difficult plan. And it's looking like G2 will find their 15th round right here, right now. Tyler will have to force by off the plant. Oh, this is a bit of a mess. Still in T-spawn, <laughs> swapping weapons around. I guess it's fine. Not ideal. But they want to see what they can do with two rifles and three pistols. Not the worst setup, but got to wait for the initial utility to be thrown before they make their move. Hacker already working in through the bottom of the tunnels. It's the early buy from Tyler. You can't blame him at all. Somebody just rattling off shots. Still sounds cool, the Deagle. Oh, yeah. Still the coolest gun in the game. Either way, they're already on catwalk. Kenny and Shocks on the site together, incendiary in hand. The fat Deagles are out of tool. Gives up the fact that Tyler were forced born to this. He wouldn't buy anything on this second round if you're going for AKs in the third. Jax with full control. He's got top and middle. He's got the worst weapon possible for this. He has to try and get close to them. He actually does a very good job at that range. Difficult to find a headshot. Does it perfectly. Gives him the opening frag. They've actually gone past shocks here. He's going to sneak through. And oh my goodness, he's absolutely owned them. And he doesn't get the second frag. He almost did. It looks like it will be Jax to make up for the little mistake there. It's a three versus two at a low HP summer. That will confirm map points and pretty much guarantee a third at this stage. Summer will go down in the end. And my God, 15-2. And that was the force by. They'll have little to nothing as we go into the third round of the second half. One more will do it for G2. And they're going to have to buy. And will they take a timeout? Is it even worth it? They have one remaining. We'll see. Bentes still seems to be believing here. Discussing their options. CZs, Galil, Mac 10. You 
can see the HE being used instead of the smoke, just to ensure the scout, if it's there, doesn't have as much vision as usual. And here comes the long take. CT's in the pit. Yeah, corner smoke that gets them further around. Once that's deployed, they knew they could fully take advantage of it. They'll also fall the other two back toward the A site instead. Bintet, smoke set towards CT. Bomb already inside of the tunnels. Pretty sure we know where this is going to go. And body needs to be sharp. Does have Lucky alongside. Famos for Lucky. So it's Summer and somebody. Presumably to go in first. Somebody has CZ. Summer has the Galil. That's the gun to watch. Body supports out for mid. That allows Shocks to push through. Good flash. Pushes through and caught them perfectly on the edge of the smoke. Exactly the team play G2 lacked on Mirage. They're making great on here. Strides forward to close this map out as well. It's just Summer and Accurate make it all on Summer. And the sun sets on the short Summer, it seems, because 16-2 is a very fast game. G2 to cash. It should have been their map to open things up. They let that lead slip away, but my God, did they make up for it in the second. 16-2 in favor of the French side. They're looking in control of this situation. It's another high fragging affair as we move forward to cash next, Matthew. That's where G2 can really sink their teeth in and continue this momentum. They're a great fragging unit. They've got some very talented players, as we've seen. Sometimes the teamwork that lets them down by cash plays very similar to Dust2, and I'm thinking they're gonna take this 2-1. We'll see if that's true or not. 2-1. It's going to go one way or the other. G2 might have the lead back. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we determine who goes home and who goes through.